And that's how I catch them myself. This here rope is, I don't know if this is maybe about 40 feet worth. And then I always kind of keep it real nice. Whether it's tying the new heifer off here, or even trying to convince her to get in a stall in the barn, it's easier than trying to scare her into it. This way there's not really much of a wrestle. It's pretty much getting this hook on her collar. So I put her collar on when she, when she was laboring, pushing out her calf. I always have the collar. I tie it on the gate over here when I got a new heifer, so I'm ready for that. Sometimes we get it on ahead of time if I got a little bit of help. So when she was laboring there, it kind of seize up a little bit and then it's really nice and easy to put it on and she isn't trying to run away or hurt herself and then so once i got that on then this big hook i basically got to do a sweet bar i got her behind the gate here anyway it's my technique so i don't have to rip my arms off or tear out my back or something or hurt her the only thing i'm trying to be careful of is she doesn't step on her calf trying to run away so i got to get this heifer milk now we're gonna we're gonna just keep this rope here. In the morning I might have to do the same thing. Usually by the third time it's they're more trusting and I'm able to kinda persuade her to stand still long enough to tie her off. Simple things. Five minutes late to help me tie up this. I had to replace you using that rope. Yeah, I and mean, then you run away with it. A bull calf, I guess so. A nice heifer. It's a big heifer, bigger than the other ones. Too big, but it's going to get big. Heifers that seem to be the most scared seem to cooperate the best during milking. And the ones that are the pets that are easy to catch and you can always come up to them and they're not scared, they seem to want to kick it off and they just get more attitude out. I don't know what it is, so just having a tame animal isn't always the answer. I think what we do is we interact with our cattle a lot, pushing up feed, bedding cattle, we're always walking around between our cattle. So they're not really like scared of us, but as soon as you start to do something out of the ordinary, then they kind of, they get concerned. What, what, are, what are we doing now? So her whole life is changing now. Went from just being a heifer, lounging around in the heifer barn for the last, you know, nine months till. And now she's moving up to the penthouse. <laughs> and, uh, getting a spot in the dairy barn. This might be the cushiest place she's going to have for a while because then she gets with the rest of the herd and she's got to work a little bit. Eat good and milk good. And, and uh, right now we kind of baby her a little bit, being that she just had the calf. She's got to clean yet. The sun didn't come out. It's almost strange how high the sun is and we still got so much snow. Tell them what time the calf was born. Had milking time this morning. There's good reason to be late with milking. So I come here, the legs are sticking out, and I check for the head, which I could tell it was probably going to be a bull calf. Looked like a big, big feet, big nose. She was laying all nice and everything. She sat up nice for me. Well, you got to give them a little time, especially a heifer, for things to open up. She already looked pretty open already, but so I decided I'm going to go do all my feeding and get ready to milk and then I'm so it was probably about an hour I came back and I still had to help her which this one came I she may have had it herself but it probably been about another hour which would have been not good to wait so you risk you to lose them doing that so we latched on and got it out and 
then we want to usually give them a give her an hour or so or two or three at the most so that sometimes they'll get up and suck by themselves which is better if they do and if they don't we have to do this don't wait too it's just too big and yeah and usually the bigger calves don't they don't stand up as soon this guy will be running around before dark a couple days he'll probably outrun us already so. It's all good. Everything's normal. Yeah, was she ate it or was this the bull? No, no. This was from our live bull we got now. That big tall guy. All my heifers are. I used to do some of the heifers AI. I mean, back before we had this new barn. So now pretty much what happens in the new barn is anything that's of age to be bred, there's room in there for them. Before the new barn, there wasn't as much room there, so we had some down in this calf barn, so then I would AI a few of them. But it really doesn't make much difference. That's a registered bull that's probably about as close to artificial as it needs to be for us. Almost got the whole thing. Just time. Take, people need to take time out for this. This is so important to do this. You got the one video on us. Uh, you kind of went through with you and I went through that. Yeah, the importance of colostrum and you can put that up. If you guys want to know more about how this throw a link, a link in the top right corner. For that. I, I went through that all pretty thoroughly. He might have sucked. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he was able to, unless he was up and now he's. And they just kind of stand. And if mom cooperates, she looked like she was sucked on one side. See these tags? We used to buy tags where the that tag's only a few years old. I mean, they get faded out, so I took a marquee and I between the numbers again so you could read them. That'd be a good question for all of these guys. I'm sure there's some opinions out there about how to, what, what tags they recommend, what they think are the hardiest. And, See our ear tags. Now hers is gone, but I know what number she is because I kept track of this in my head. But I mean, we put those blue tags in they, all the heifers, and they would last until maybe the third or fourth lactation before they come out. But I think what's happening is in the the, the slats of the feed bunk, like in a bullpen and in, in a bull barn, and then even in the calf barn, from there going in and out, as they get older, they end up flicking them off. Like out in the pasture, that wouldn't happen. They shouldn't lose their tag until they're like several years old. They should be three or four years old before you lose the tag. So I don't know, but even those neck chain tags. So then we always get that for the stall barn because they lose this tag. So then you still got to have that. So we just have them both written in the book. Yeah, so if any of you guys know of a really good uh, tag company or brand, ear tag or collar tags, uh, let us know. It seems like you can't find anything at your farm stores anymore. It's just not enough, mm. enough being sold. Yeah, or there's something. not enough to demand for them to keep everything. I mean, some there. people use them for other things, like to mark. I don't know. You, you name it, they're just you could hang a tag on anything to keep track of stuff. When I came here, I had some really big tags I found somewhere. They were, they were, oh, they were mm. thicker. They were good, but then it's plastic too. They went, they went bad through time. I mean, it, after 10, 12 years, that's just about it. It's I wonder how well a steel tag would hold up over time. When we were kids, they had steel ones. The thing is there too, you couldn't read the number. They get, they get like were... Just that'd be like a flat piece of... Yeah, it was a brown. It was smooth. It was just shaped just like that. And um, some of them, they were on, hanging on cows. So stuff from my grandpa, I imagine, where the, where the ring went through. It had a groove wore up in there pretty far. So it was good forever until it, you're talking 20 years or longer on something like that. That'd be a cool uh, antique or something to run into. If you ever run into, you know, maybe some auction stuff or some of these farms that quick, you might find it in a box. They're all steel. And you could imagine what that would cost today. <laughs> $30 a day. At least she seems like a good mom. No, this, this heifer's going to be all right. Everything you want to see. A little larger than I care for because what happens is they typically grow up a lot more the first year. But so you don't, I don't like to have them calve too big 
but she's a little over two years old already, but it's just genetics, I guess. I don't know if you guys can hear a river howling in the background. That's been her thing lately. They just howl. There you are. All right, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our other videos. I'll link our other calving videos in the description or in the top right corner of the video as well. So if you're interested in that stuff, we got plenty of videos on how we take care of our newborn calves and, and how we milk our fresh cows. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.